Welcome live to Guy's and St Thomas's. It's official. Britain is the fattest country in Europe. Today, we meet a woman who traded her butter knife for the surgeon's scalpel. But now, she's paying the price for a quick fix. The government has promised patients in casualty a waiting time of no longer than four hours. That sounds like a job for the A&E team. It has to be run with military precision. We're going to pop you into a cubicle. Today, I'm the navigator. She or he has a helicopter view of where the spaces are in the department. You go here, you go there. The streaming nurse sits at a desk. She eyeballs the patient. This patient needs immediate placing in a cubicle. It can be incredibly stressful at the moment. There are lots of ambulances. We are now in amber. It's an ongoing major team effort to keep on top of it. The A and E team. He's a highly skilled professional, but Anthony's problems begin when he gets wet behind the ears. Anthony is a sea survival expert, but he's had to resort to extreme measures to stop the tiniest drop of water getting into his ears. When I do some training, I have to put two, three, four, four caps on, the earplugs, you name it, I have to do it. Uh, and it's quite a palaver. And I come on poolside and all the students have a good laugh because I look a real plonker. <laughs> I really do. Five years ago, Anthony began to go deaf in both ears. Doctors put in plastic grommets, tiny ventilation tubes to help relieve the pressure in his eardrum. The operation was successful, but now the grommets have fallen out, leaving Anthony with a hole in each ear. I'd have to be very careful not to get water in it, but it's almost impossible. But if I go swimming and I do get water in it, then almost instantly I know I've got a problem. It's quite painful, uh, and obviously we can't keep going on like that forever and a day. Doctors at St Thomas's are going to take a sliver of skin from behind his ear and use it to plug the hole. His hearing is actually not affected at all. His hearing is fine, but uh, with these holes in the eardrums, he has a big problem going swimming because he gets infections every time. So by doing that, hopefully, if it works, he'll be able to go to in the water like anybody else. Don't let my wife know I'm surrounded by all the Not go down well. Okay, look, can I have a speculum, a suction on? I'm going to inject some uh, adrenaline with local anaesthetic here to reduce the bleeding when I do my cuts in the ear. Mr. Imat starts working in the ear canal, exposing Anthony's damaged eardrum. I'm lifting the skin, uh, being careful not to tear it. Uh, and once that's lifted, I'll, I'll leave it and then I'll take the graft. Out for now. His do-it-yourself earplug will come from just under the hairline behind Anthony's left ear. About the size of a 5p coin, something like that. And now I stretch it on my glove so it dries out while I do the rest of prepare the operation a bit more. And it's like a cornflake, really. OK, now I'm going to stitch this. Can I have some uh, vital, please? It's time to apply the graft. And fortunately, Mr. Imat is having a bit of a sticky moment. So, you know, one of the ways to do and stick it is to get your gloves, stretch it. And there we are. After less than an hour, Anthony's new ear is ready. I'm just checking that the graft is in place and there's no areas of the hole that are not covered. And we're finished. That's the scar where I took the, the tissue from, but the, the hair will grow back all the way here. 
So it's on the line of, of the hair, so it won't show really. Just a little deaf in this ear, but then they've, they've padded it up. But apart from that, um, absolutely fine. It'll be a few weeks before Anthony's completely shipship again. Until then, sadly, the rubber caps will have to stay put. But as long as she can remember, 30-year-old Maddie Vella has wanted to fly in a helicopter. But now that her wish has finally come true, it's for all the wrong reasons. Single mother Maddie loves adventure. It was while she was on a Christian camping holiday that her addiction to extreme sports nearly killed her. Hello, my name is Nicholas. This is my mum and I love her very much. And I hope she will get better soon because I love her so much and I miss her so much. The big issues at first were definitely her pain. Naturally, she had a spinal fracture. And that took quite a while, that really slowed the progress because that was quite a problem for Maddie. Um, but over the weekend that feels like that's really progressed on now and so now we can really push things, we can get her in the gym, we can do lots of more strengthening work with her legs, some balance work. Um, we want to get her off the Zimmer frame onto crutches. My big worry would be that my bone's not healing properly, um, that's a big massive worry. But um, I've been doing a lot of physio and I felt that my bone's quite stable. OK, breathe in and right out. If Maddie's spine isn't healing, then she could need complicated surgery. An X-ray is the only way to be sure. Breathe away. But the news is good. Bone starts forming itself. I mean, within the first six to eight weeks, you start getting new bone, and within three months, it becomes even proper, more sort of strong bone. Yeah. So I'll have okay. a new bone now within like a few months. Yeah. <laughs> After two more weeks of intensive physio, Maddie's progress is amazing. Wow, that programme has absolutely flown for me, but uh, that is all we've got time for today. I hope you can join Matt, Carol and me tomorrow when we're also going to be joined by a very special hospital visitor. Wait for this, girls. Ronan Keating. Yes, we are bringing him to you. And I hope you'll all be with us. We'll be live at 10 o'clock, BBC One. Goodbye. <laughs>